Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the front lines review because there are some of the changes. Let's zoom it to the hot spot which is now near to Makarivka. You may see that we have the confirmation that Ukrainian forces entered that village and liberated it, there are no Russians any longer. So if we look to the timeline, it was yesterday and it is today. You can see Ukrainian army advances with every day and it's awesome. And we haven't used our reserves yet. Until today, Rivnopil is the only village in this area that is still under control by the Russian forces. Russia tries to throw the disinformation that they were able to return Makarovka under control, but today they have to admit after many of the photos from the place that Ukrainian forces took that village. So what will be the next move for the Ukrainian forces in that particular area? I would continue to move down the river, taking all of those villages and probably enter the Priyutne over here. Because there are two rivers near to Rivna Peel, this village do not possess the significant risk for Ukrainian forces. Basically, it's the locked area for the Russian army. Russians here are unable to get supplies because the only road for supplies is very close to the front line very close to the battle area. Ukraine might just use the standard mortars to eliminate supplies for this whole area. So the only way for Russia to withdraw from the place, so maybe using this road partially, and they need to do it just right now. Because then Ukraine takes Priyutna village, Russians will be trapped over here. They are now half encircled and in that case they still have the small corridor to withdraw. But it would be very, very hard for them because Ukraine may continue to move forward from this side and also from this side. That's the main goal, to use the Klav's strategy, attacking from two of the sides. Russia used these tactics before and Ukraine uses it right now in this area. This is the only place where we have the movement of the front line. Here we also got the movement, but not right now. Ukraine gets more reinforcements very close to the front lines and probably we're gonna try to attack in some different area too. For the Bakhmut, everything is standstill for four days already. And for the Russian territory near to Shebekino, the Russian Freedom Legion and the Russian volunteers are still remain in Nova Tovalzhanka. Yes, it's not shown on this map, but from the footages coming from the place, they are still over there and Russia cannot do anything with less than 100 soldiers. For how long they're gonna stay there? I'm out of clue. Maybe they're gonna try to attack from different side as well. We'll see it. And today there were many interesting news. Let's go for them. All right, Russia sent more than 20 helicopters to the Berdansk airfield. This is the occupied Ukrainian territory on the south. I hope you can see those helicopters over here, especially if you're watching me from the smartphone. Probably in that case, it's complicated because the screen on the phone is smaller than on TV or on the laptop. But nevertheless, I showed you the points of the helicopter stand. This image is much better, so according to the image they have at least 5 of the K-52 attack helicopters that may eliminate the tanks. You may say that Ukraine should target the airfield and those helicopters using the Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Yes, we might do so, but to target all of those helicopters we need at least 10 or maybe even 15 cruise missiles. Because they put helicopters really far away from each other, so for this it's better to use the Heimer's rocket artillery system, but the airfield is further away, much further away than the maximum range of the Heimer's standard rockets. That's why we need the long-range attackers rockets or missiles and they may target the larger area than they impact into something. We continue to use the storm shadow but mostly against the Russian military bases, Russian command. Please watch my previous video from the yesterday when they targeted the Russian command center together with the general Russia lost lots of the officers. And today that information was officially confirmed. For those helicopters it's better to use the portable man pads, the air defense systems with a short up to medium range. So that should work. Putin held the special press conference today with the Russian military bloggers, but the vast part of those bloggers 
are mostly living in Moscow and not on the front lines. There were even some toxic people around that table recognized as the complete liars. So Putin as usual started to say nonsense about his special operation that Ukraine lost already 160 tanks because of the new counteroffensive that Ukrainian army performs on the south part. 160 it's the largest number that i heard even russian propaganda said the maximum number of 120 and some say 46. well actually we lost two of the leopard tanks and a little bit more than 10 bradleys putin also admitted the russian losses he said that russia lost more than 50 tanks because of the new counteroffensive operation conducted by Ukraine. Here this number I think also larger than it is in real. At least based on the information that is coming to the social media or the Oryx resource. Maybe he was saying about the armored vehicles in total because based on the Oryx resource both of the sides lost around 50 of the armored vehicles because of the recent counterattack performed by Ukrainian army. Putin also showed his lack of competence in the question of what is really happening on the front lines. He commented on the question about the Belgorod region and he said that Russia successfully pushed the opposition forces out from the Russian Federation and even General Lapin was leading the Russian forces with his pistol. Remember the totally hoax and totally cringy video that the Russian General Lapin was walking with all his heights in front of his soldier calling everyone to move to liberate the Russian territory. He was calling for motherland and it was total cringe. But Putin believed in that. Also, he said that Russia has destroyed the office of Ukrainian intelligence using the cruise missiles or other rockets, which is total fake that was taken by the Russian propaganda. Actually, there was the strike on that office, but rocket went into the Dnepr River. The office of Ukrainian intelligence is located on the island right on the Dnepr River. So there was the CCTV camera on the office that showed that rocket went into the Dnepr River. The story was taken by the Russian journalists, let's say, and Putin was reported about it as the successful mission to demolish the Ukrainian office, but the office is still there, everyone might see it. Plus, he said again that he was deceived by the Ukrainian side after the Russian Federation withdrew the forces from the Kiev region. He expected to negotiate some sort of the peace deal with Ukraine, but Ukraine started to push Russians out from its territory. Ukraine started to obtain weaponry and Putin says that it's the main problem for him right now. <laughs> I'm sure that the majority of the Russian military bloggers who were sitting at the same table with Putin at that press conference, they more or less know the real situation. And no one said anything about the misinformation that Putler gave to the press. This conference of Putin was really outstanding as for me because it shows that Putin lives in his own informational bubble. He obtains the paper reports, he doesn't use internet and he probably watches some sort of the channels on the Russian TV, but not many. I'm 100% sure that me and you, we know more about the situation on the front lines than Putin. I think that those people who give the reports to Putin usually, they do not give the bad news. And there was the information about it from the British intelligence. In general, it means that Russia has no leader, has no major commander. Shoigu and Gerasimov, they're doing something. Prigozhin is doing something. We're gonna speak about Prigozhin later in this video. And Putin, well, he lives in his own Russia, the parallel reality. All right, Ukraine continued to cut the Russian supplies. It was the explosion near to Mihailovka, not far away from the Tokmak. And Tokmak should be the first big town on the way for Ukrainian army to liberate the territory down to Melitopol. Plus, Ukraine targeted the ammunition depot in Luhansk today. The big news about the new supplies for the Ukrainian army, United States will send the special tank rounds with depleted uranium. Those will be used for the Abrams tanks and the Abrams tanks are expected to arrive to Ukraine during the autumn period. Before, the United Kingdom agreed to send the special depleted uranium shells for their Challenger 2 tanks. 
By the way, we haven't seen the Challenger 2 tanks in action yet, but those of course will be used in future. Also, there were no any German martyrs in use. By the way, Germany will also send more tanks to Ukraine, compensating losses of two Leopard 2 tanks. The Belarusian dictator Lukashenko commented on receiving the nuclear weaponry. He said that they will use the nukes if they see the threat for the sovereignty of Belarus, but actually Belarus lost the sovereignty long time before. Now it is just the part of Russia. That country has the sovereign right just on the paper. All right, I found this map on the Russian resources and here are their defense lines, as you can see. And also, as you can see, we are still far away from those defense lines. So we took Makarovka recently and still we need to proceed along the river just to enter the Russian fortification zone, let's say the trenches and others. For that stuff, probably we need reserves that Ukraine is hesitating so far to use to move in. It's the main task for Ukraine to go through the Russian defense line and obviously there will be many more losses but if you penetrate this line you'll go to the vast uh, fields and luckily russia has just a single defense line in this area in this region the quality of the image is not very nice but if we speak about the tokmak area you may see that russia has many of the defense lines in that area so it's not really a good variant to start the attack using this direction it's very obviously to move like this the ukrainian soldiers are still in the training now they're in germany mastering the leopard 1a5 tank i think that until we receive those tanks there will be no penetration of the defense lines on the south also there should be many more new armored vehicles delivered to ukraine plus abrams tanks so maybe we're gonna move forward till the russian trenches and then we'll have everything we're gonna penetrate the defense lines and also using the fighter jets and then we're gonna go to crimea this autumn at least it seems like more logical for me to get as many resources as possible and our western allies continue to say that they will supply more ammunition for successful ukrainian counteroffensive. so that's why we shouldn't expect the huge move from the ukrainian army in the nearby perspective that's all my thoughts i could be wrong all right prigozhin he went on a special rally he visits lots of the russian cities with his conferences as the Ukrainian intelligence chief Budanov admitted, 80% of what Prigozhin says is actually truth. And those 80% are about the terrible situation in the Russian army and in the Russian system as a whole. This conference of his was at the same time with the conference of Vladimir Putin with military bloggers. Vladimir Putin said that Ukraine lost 160 tanks. Prigozhin said that Ukraine lost two tanks during the recent counteroffensive. He admitted that Ukraine went on successful counteroffensive, they are getting closer, they are getting territories, and Russia has nothing to respond. He says that there is no movement from the Russian command in handling the current situation on the south. And he also said that Ukraine has all the chances for the successful counterattack. In case Ukrainian army is not being stopped on the south, it will reach Crimea. The Russian Ministry of Defense had showed how they demolished the Ukrainian tank, but actually it is the Russian tank. There were some of the Russian propaganda reporters over there showing the tank, and it was interesting to find this mark. This is the part of the uniform of the Russian soldier, because we know that it's the Russian tactical beard brigade they have this it is not the first time that russia shows their own casualties or own destroyed vehicles and saying that those are ukrainians my friends don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my channel there will be some of the links in the video description just below you may support me on paypal patreon or just on a sponsorship on this youtube channel thank you so much for your awesome support i wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time